Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Illustration Masterclass here on Adobe Live. And I am your host, Kyle Webster, and I'm here today to talk to you about something that is uh, very important to me, something that I teach my students at the university where I teach, and something that was taught to me when I was in school that I just think is so important, and that is being able to draw accurately when you are trying to copy something, when you're drawing from observation, what are some tricks you can use to draw accurately? Uh, of course, this is extremely important uh, if you're trying to draw something that looks like what you see. Therefore, it's important that we cover it today. So, um, if you've never studied this in an academic way, um, then this will be really helpful for you, I hope. And uh, if you already have studied it, then maybe this is a good refresher for you. And maybe you can also offer some of your own ideas in the chat. Uh, speaking of the chat, uh, I'm following the chat over on Behance. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. Be as in to be or not to be, dot net slash Adobe Live. And that is where I can read your comments and I can respond to them or to any questions that you might have along the way. So if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, please head on over to Behance and we can chat. So hi to some folks here. Afroha's here. Hi. And Christelle and Wade and Cryo and Steve and RB. Nice to see you all. Hi, Uma Corn. Nice to see you as well. And I see, uh, who did I miss? I missed somebody along the way there. My apologies. Mercurial. Hi. Uh, and anyway, it's time for us to get going because this is a very important topic and I want to get right to the drawing. So let's do it. All right. So you see on my Photoshop screen here, what I have is a photograph of a woman reading a book holding a pen. If I were going to try and draw this from observation, how would I go about doing this? So um, let's check this out and uh, let's make it happen. All right. First things first, I'm going to be using a pencil to draw with. And the pencil I'm using today right here is a very simple but very practical brush that you can use in Photoshop and it's called Perfect Pencil One. Um, no one ever accused me of being modest when it comes to naming the tools I designed. So I apologize. You have Perfect Pencil One, Perfect Pencil Two. Uh, they're similar to one another but not totally identical. If I were to make a, a mark here with the Perfect Pencil One next to the second one, You'll see that the Perfect Pencil one is just a little bit rougher, and uh, that's just how it is, okay? You know, on second thought, I might draw with this second one. Yeah, I think I will. It's not gonna make a huge difference. But there are plenty of pencils to draw with here, and they are in the Mega Pack drawing box. Kyle, how do I get the Mega Pack? Tap on this little drop-down menu in your brushes panel. Come on down to where it says, Get More Brushes, and Bob's your uncle going to take you to a nice page where you can sign in with your Adobe credentials and grab over 1,900 custom brushes and you can play around with those. All right, so back to our drawing. So here is our subject. Now, if I wanted to draw this, a lot of people, if they've never um, studied drawing in an academic environment or learned uh, about how to draw accurately, they may do something like this. They might say, all right, well, I'm gonna start with that eye over there on the right, and then I'm gonna try and draw that nose over here and then try and draw that eye over here and, you know, start start there and just keep on moving and say, okay, there's my chin, right? And uh, there's that mouth and I'm gonna move on up and there's that hair, etc. And they're gonna try and do the drawing like this. Now. I suppose that could work for some of you all, and that's fine. Uh, that's not how I do it, and that's not how most people do it. Okay, here's what they do instead. So let's abandon that method. First thing I want to talk about today is working big to small, big to small. So for me to have started that drawing right with that eye on the right side, I'm literally drawing one of the smallest shapes in the entire piece first. This is not how you do it. No, folks, if you want to work quickly, and this is important too, is being able to work fast and efficiently so you have fewer and fewer mistakes to correct down the road. Um, what you wanna do instead is look at the drawing from 
head to toe. And I say head to toe because it's a human, right? But really we're talking from the top to the bottom of the entire area that I'm trying to draw. And the first thing I do is I look at that and I say, okay, now as a shape, we'll zoom out here so you can see this more clearly. Um, as a shape, it is longer, or rather, excuse me, taller than it is wide. So that's the first observation that I will make about this thing that I'm trying to draw. And it's important also to mention that this method of drawing is great because you can apply it to any subject matter. So it's not like you're trying to draw specifically people. And when I draw people, this is how I need to think. Versus when I draw, say, a car, this is how I need to think. No, the beauty of this method is that you apply it to everything. It works for any subject matter. It's a very basic system, and that's what's really nice. It's just universally applicable to the subject matter you're, that you're drawing, okay? And so, again, first observation is that I'm dealing with a shape that is taller than it is wide. Now, when you want to decide what is that relationship of height to width, one of the easiest things to do is to sort of draw a bounding box or frame around the general thing that you want to draw. All right, now for this person here, what I could do is just kind of sketch something like this and say that's kind of about what I'm observing for the main figure. And then as I do that, what I can start to do is with this larger shape, the biggest bounding box I can draw for the entire subject, I can then start to sort of subdivide or break up or divide that space in a useful way, in a practical way, that will help me to measure, okay? So one of the first things I can observe is that we have a really helpful line of division in this drawing, or rather in this photo, that's already there for the taking. Sometimes you have to invent these lines. You have to subdivide, you know, and work into halves and quarters and try and find something that lines up with each of these subdivisions. Okay, and that's a very, very good way to go, right? But what I'm gonna do instead, before I do that, is I'm gonna make an observation about this person. And the observation I can make is that this line where the shirt meets the skirt is a really helpful measuring tool for me because it falls above the halfway point. So I know that if I can divide this rectangle in half about here, okay? I like to pass through all the way. That's always a helpful thing to do as well. If I can divide that in half, what I can do next is I can say, well, how much higher than the halfway mark is the line of that skirt, okay? And then I can just sort of indicate that in my drawing and say, great, I have now this really useful landmark to work from. So I'm now moving from top to bottom or from bottom to top and looking for areas that I can quickly indicate where I find a landmark a point where something gets divided, and then work from there. So while we're in the middle of this process, why don't we carry on and do some more of that by looking at how close that book is to where the skirt is. See that? The other nice thing about this book is it's a, it's a secondary shape in a way. It, it's moving out and to the right, okay? from the main shape that I'm drawing, which is the body and head of this person, right? So I see it moving out there to the right, and what I can do is I can say, all right now, if this area here represents the farthest point to the right of my figure, what is that point? So if I look over here at the model, well, I can tell you right now, it's this area right here the hip. See that? So that would be roughly the top of the femur bone right there. Okay, the leg bone there. So that's a great thing for me to notice. And I can also see that it's just below 
just below the halfway the halfway point right about there okay and so now that I have that right I can say great that's gonna come on down to here and then that shoe is gonna poke out just a little bit down here okay so if I really want it to be accurate I can get this to be a little taller and don't be afraid to make adjustments as you go but now that I know that this here this area okay is the farthest point to the right I can then start to compare other things like the dimensions of the book or the, the points of the book where there is a change in direction like this corner that corner and the farthest corner out here right I can do things with the book but I can also start to align other parts of the body along this vertical so this is one of the first things I want you to think about when you are doing this kind of drawing and that is alignment how does one area of your subject align with another area of your subject okay and because I know this is the point that's the farthest to the right I can use this line here as another measuring device and start to push inwards from this line to hit other landmarks for example look here okay the shoulder now if I were to divide this entire space this entire rectangle into quarters remember we did this a moment ago let's go ahead and actually do that all right so I'm gonna do this here we go kind of get that into quarters what I find is that that shoulder is just above the line where the first the top quarter and the second quarter are divided I also then can look vertically I can say okay I'm going to travel from this outermost point on the right inwards and then up see this one and two to catch about where I think that shoulder is going to sit right about there all right so I've got that angle now all right from the shoulder to the hip and I'm just going to go ahead and draw that as a line in my drawing and now what we're doing is we're starting to move inwards from that bounding box and design a large shape still it's still a large shape but it's a more specific shape that will contain the elements of uh, the drawing right and we're still not working with any details are we no we're looking for these important larger landmarks along the way now one thing I love to do is work across an object or a subject all right so we travel up and down here right but also to travel across and see where other things hit and shoulders and if you're drawing a human shoulders are a good landmark you know points of articulation elbows shoulders knees things like that and what I can do is from here I can travel across and say all right now the outermost point I have in this entire area is this shoulder right here so I'm going to travel all the way across to here and then I notice too and this is interesting if I come over horizontally I'm pulling a horizontal this way I notice that this shoulder is higher than this shoulder so I should indicate that right so that's another important thing because now I have that angle established all right you see how this works so this is a really helpful thing Rob is asking me a question do you ever use the seven heads rule in your drawings I don't really do that Rob mostly because so many poses involve a figure bending over forward or backwards or sitting or partially uh, hunched over or maybe one leg is up or there's foreshortening involved um, the times when you have a figure standing perfectly upright and facing you and all that uh, you know it's so rare that that actually happens it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind and this is by the way folks this idea that the average human is about seven and a half to eight heads tall um, if you're drawing superheroes you go for more of like a nine and a half ten heads sort of uh, set of proportions um, FYI same would go for fashion design 
you elongate mostly the lower half of the body in fashion design, along with the arms a little bit. Um, and fun fact, the, the figures that look so amazing um, that you find in ancient Greek and Roman sculpture, those two are usually somewhere around the nine head to even ten head in length proportions because it makes them seem more beautiful, stronger, more quote-unquote ideal than the average human, right? Um, but no, I, so I don't really use it that much. Uh, you know, looking at a, a pose like this, for example, um, you know, because it's a contraposto pose, which means the weight is on one leg, this leg, the weight is really off this leg and the weight is here and the hips are shifted forward. This hip is dropping down. Already you're losing a tiny bit of height and also that curvature of uh, the spine there and then the, the head coming forward. These are things that could throw me off a little bit. So to answer your question, not really. Um, uh, let's see. Here we go. All right, moving on. So you've seen what we've done here with that shoulder. All right, now I know that's the point that's the furthest out. And I'm sure you can guess that the next step is to do the same thing with other points of articulation, right? Knees, the heels or ankles here are really helpful. You understand? So as I'm coming down here, right, I can say, all right, now for that height, I can indicate about here is probably where that foot begins. Now we're looking at high heels, so that foot is elevated, right? So that's a helpful thing. I'm gonna push that hip up just a little higher there. And don't be afraid to make adjustments. This is all part of the deal. Make adjustments in your drawing, okay? There we go. And then I can say that that is falling where? Now, if I look at the relationship between this area where the leg ends and the foot begins, right around the ankle, one of the other things you can do, and this is really cool, is you can drop verticals like this. I can drop a vertical down and say, ah, look at that. This falls just inside of, inside of that shoulder. So if I drop a vertical down here, what I can do is notice that I did not get this angle right. So I just pull this over like that and say, there we go. That's more accurate. So this is the kind of thing you do and you check yourself on this and you do this stuff up front. You don't draw a leg and draw a foot and then later go and check. No, no, no. This is the kind of thing you want to do early in the drawing so that you get yourself set up for success. Okay. So now I'm able to align those and say, great, all right, this is how we achieve accuracy. So alignment, alignment, alignment. One of the other things we talked about, but we didn't really uh, explain in detail is angles, right? So looking at an angle like this, what I'm trying to do is travel straight across the form. Now, when you're drawing anything, okay, whatever the thing is that you're drawing, um, there's going to be complexity along the way when you're traveling from one point to another. And the key is to learn to see through that and draw the straightest path possible to help you just to align and place these landmarks in your drawing. All that complexity that happens, those are more of the medium-sized shapes and then the small shapes. So remember, we're working big to medium to small. That's the name of the game. Right, so by being able to simplify and see through from here to here and try and match that angle like this, right, that is gonna save me a ton of time later down the road because imagine if I started rendering and drawing all this and then realized that this shoulder was dropping down here. Everything else would be thrown off and I'd have trouble down the road, I don't want that, okay? Speaking of dropping vertical lines, which we just did to help us with shoulder to ankle. Well, I want you to notice something. As I look over here, look at this from that shoulder right there. I can draw straight up and hit the top of the forehead there where the hairline is. That is a very, very helpful thing, isn't it? So let's do that. Let's just drop, draw that vertical, right? And now we're looking here and saying, okay, this is the top of our drawing. Remember that the top of our drawing is actually this shape here, okay? Which is part of the hair and that hair is sitting up on top of the actual cranium. So we don't want to draw the head like this big, right? That would be inaccurate. So just keeping that in mind, what I want to do instead is just indicate that shape. 
Now I don't know exactly where to put it, right? What I just did there was just me randomly guessing. So how would I actually do that accurately? Well, again, because I know where the front of the head is, okay, I can look at this total height, right? And I can look from shoulder to the top, one, two. And here's the cool thing you can do is you can subdivide again. So if I look from here up to the very top of my drawing, right? And I look at the top of my drawing here and I'm looking at the top of the photo here. I can say, well, where the hairline starts, where is that along this section? Is it halfway? No, All right? I can see this, it's not halfway. But what I like to do is give myself another little subdivision there, right? And then I can travel up from there and say it's just above that halfway point, about here, okay? Somewhere like about there. So now that I know that, now I can draw an angle like this, right? And notice there is a curved area here, but I'm trying to just draw right through that to where that shape is there for that sort of bun at the top of the head, right? And then I can follow again down this way, and I have this other landmark here. And this is gonna bring me to an interesting thing you can do, which is to draw lines that pass into open space or across an area of the drawing and connect with something else, right? So as I do this, I notice, hey, look at this. I can pass through here, right? Like this. See that, that angle right there? Ba boom Try to match that angle over here and say that directly above this point, this shoulder, okay? And then a little bit to the right, I'm getting part of that hand right there. So that is helping me to get that placement right. Then I can do things like this. I can travel over this way and say how far between the hand or the end of this pen, if you like, right? That's like nice because it's an actual line in the drawing. Just throw that little pen in there like this. How close is the tip of that pen to the back of the neck right there? It's about like here, right? So you see what we're doing? This is how this whole system works. It's so useful. I've got this line here, and that is going to be above the hand. So I just, I look at my hand here, I travel up, I double check here, see how I'm doing, right? Now what about the face? Again, lots of complexity here, but I just wanna draw a line straight down to this point where the shirt and the skin are um, separated from one another, right? We see this V shape here. Look at this angle. If I do this, see how that passes right through, right? Now I can do that on my paper and I can do it in such a way that I look and see how much further below this landmark is this point here. So I travel down and travel across and then I try and match that angle, right? So I do this, boom. And then I basically hit that spot right there. And then again, you guessed it, I travel up from there and see what it hits to see if I got it right. So as I go up, this needs to be over a little more to the left. As I go up here, see this is the thing, you can check yourself. And up we go. And I should get right there, almost the back of the ear, okay? So just barely inside of that. And I can see that that hairline right there, there we go, is gonna overlap with that ear right about there. And then I can check the ear against the hand. Do you see how we do this? So I'm getting a little bit into details. We don't wanna do that, but I just wanna show you how this works, how this system is so useful. Traveling up from the shoulder I've got that distance to the chin, so I can just knock that in. There we go, like so. And then I can feel good about where that is for now. Okay, coming back to this arm, I've got this elbow right here. And that elbow, I'm noticing, 
right? I can actually kind of draw a line almost from here to here to get that. So it's kind of like this, right? Need to change that angle, hang on a second. Here's my point where the shirt is. So that's this. And then this is more kind of like this. There we go. And then out and up. And it's just inside of there where I get that section of the elbow right there, right? And then if I were to travel up from here, it starts where that neck starts to, to curve, right there. So I know that that needs to come over a bit more like this, and that's just gonna connect. See how that comes right on down to the shoulder like that? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Very nice. And then I can also do things like look at the distance from here to here, kind of get that angle for the shirt. Drop down from there, and I see, okay, that elbow's gotta be a little lower, so I just plop it on down there, right? And then bring it up. And there's that hand. You notice that your drawing takes on this appearance of having a lot of marks. What you can do is, as you go along and you feel good about the measurements you're making, you take your eraser, and you can do this digitally, or you can do this, of course, uh, traditionally, it doesn't matter how you do this. Um, when I'm teaching this at school, I'm teaching this with charcoal on paper. Same exercise though, there's nothing different. And you can just knock stuff back like this, right? You can knock it all back. And you can start to see how things are mapping out, right? So we have angles, we have alignment, and we have measuring, where we're measuring distances. And it's important to say again that this is comparative measurement, all right? It's not just measuring for the sake of like guessing, well, that's halfway between this and this and this. Sometimes the comparative measurement is what you're using, and that is comparing the length of one thing to another, or the angle of one thing to another. Where do you find parallels, for example, if you can find parallel angles? Now this area here that I drew, well, look at this. It's parallel to this angle down here where the leg is. That's an important thing for me to note Okay, because I might have to later be like, all right, cool. You know, I'm dropping down here. I've got this leg here, right? And just to keep things simple, I just carry that leg up because I see that's mostly a vertical sort of an action there, right? And I also noticed then, see how we subdivided this into two halves, this bottom area here, the bottom half of our figure. We subdivided it into two halves that down a little bit there. I look at these two halves and I say now about where does that knee sit? You know, so I look at this, I look at this, and I say, well, you know, about in that position there, and notice how from this traveling upwards here, right, the knee is going to come over the inside of the calf there and hit about probably here. And I remember this line here, so I just kind of echo that angle there, and there we've got the same kind of angle right there. And that helps me with that, okay? And I can see that this line of the shirt here is kind of gonna connect with the leg there. You see, this is something you get good at. You start to notice these areas that just travel all the way across the subject right to another area, so I can do a check with that and say, okay, how are we doing there, right? And that helps me to better connect this and make that work, all right? And there you go. So let's pause now for questions. Uh, let's see. Um, hey, Frank's there. Frank, I mean, sorry, Frank. Uh, wow, it's, it's, it's late for you over there. Yeah, Wade is right. In real life, those those standards don't usually apply, really. Um, not as not as strictly, anyway. 
Um, let's see. This is helpful. This is Bex. Great, Bex. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, roll that needed erasers. <laughs> yeah. Pan. Um, you know what I use? I use a pink pearl eraser. I really like those. It's not a needed eraser, but it, you know, it's. I just like them. They're they're a little easier for me to work with. All right, so you can see how this is working out. Now remember, we still have this division we made really early on where the skirt was, right? Now one thing I haven't done is check myself to see, you know, is that the right distance from the bottom of the elbow? Now look, it's not, is it? Right, that elbow is much closer. It's about here. So that's exactly the kind of thing that will keep me in line and keep me doing the right thing, right? Is checking that kind of stuff earlier, not later, okay? You don't want to be doing this stuff after you've done a bunch of drawing. No, 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 no. Okay, so there we've got now the right shape, generally, for that arm and that hand right there. Okay, that feels a lot better. Okay. And there is a good point right there for the shirt there. And on this side, it comes over and then straight up. And we come out to the shoulder. See how much easier it is now for me to fill in these details, right? Because I've done all this work up front. And another thing I want you to notice is that I'm using straight lines. I'm not using a lot of curvilinear lines, right? The one curvilinear line I have here is this, just because it's such a strong passage right there, you know, kind of want to just get that there. All right. We've got this one shape up here. We've got another shape that lines up almost with the top of the head, just slightly below it right there. And then down it goes and stops right where the ear is, right? And there's our ear. A bump. Okay. And now from that skirt, Inside of the skirt is inside of the arm. Notice that? So I come down here and I've already got that. This is almost a vertical, right? Comes down to where? Comes down to just above the ankle. I can draw that line if I want to, to hit that angle and get that accurate. Okay, and then I can just kind of do this. Draw a vertical and then slightly change, alter that vertical so that it more closely resembles that angle, okay? See how the shirt puffs out here? I can connect that, one and two. All right, it's all coming together now. This is what I like. This is what I wanna see. Um, distance from knee to top of skirt. Knee to top of skirt. Where does the front of the skirt fall? So I look at that total distance and then I'm able to guess, not guess, sorry, I'm able to ac accurately, you know, draw that in there and say, great, now what's that angle coming across, right? So remember that our skirt starts here, and now we have that further out point. We can connect this way, one, and down, okay? And I can then look at the angle of the skirt from here. So here's the skirt. We angle out this way. We come almost straight down and then we cut across and start to move in this direction. And it stops right about halfway between this bottom, these two bottom sections right here, right? So I can just do that, just draw that as a straight line, right? And then we pick up the rest of the skirt down there, like that, okay? So is this making sense to everybody? Is what I'm doing resonating with you? Is this helping you? I hope this is helping you. Now you might think this is a painstaking way to draw, but what I'm doing is I'm breaking this down for you very slowly and very methodically. But the truth is, in doing this drawing in real time for myself, I would still be doing a lot of these same things, but I would be doing it much more rapidly 
and a bit more of it in a gestural way. But I'm looking and observing and doing a lot of this work in my brain, in the background. Um, constantly looking across the figure, looking for distances, trying to measure, trying to look for angles, comparing those angles uh, to find if I can see one that's similar, um, find angles that are uh, parallel, look for the length of things relative to other lengths, using verticals and horizontals to um, align landmarks like we did with the top of the forehead where the hairline begins, right? Passing almost right through where that skirt is right there and then passing again where to the outside ankles zing right there see how nice that is to be able to line those things up right and then subdividing the, the larger space into halves or quarters or thirds however you want to do it so that this is really um, gonna make you draw more accurately now we talked a while ago about the book and I didn't yet return to it but I haven't forgotten because now that we have all this other information, look how convenient this is. Notice that this shoulder, which we indicated uh, earlier, right? Notice something. How does the shoulder align to the top of the book on the far right end? Well, guess what, gang? You can see it right there. Bam, it's hitting it perfectly. See how this horizontal and vertical alignment can help us out. So there it is, right? Now, how far out is it? from there. Well, here's another th cool thing I can notice. The distance from the shoulder to the left of the figure, the distance to the right of the book, well, holy cow. They are identical. That just gives me a perfect way to get that book to be the right size. Okay? How convenient. So, what about where the break happens here? Okay, at the spine of the notebook. Well, I'll show you something else that happens to work out great. Hello! This point on the shirt right here. Ta-da! I just carry a line out that way. Okay, and now I've got that angle. Ta-da! Right? Notice how it's just a little lower? So what? I can make accommodations for that. Just like that. Right? And then here comes the rest of that book out this way. Notice that I can look at the negative space here. This is something else to really pay attention to. And I remember what I talked about, these implied lines that show up. Well, look, check it out. Ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. Right down the shoulder we go. And what do we do? Look at that. Lines up perfectly with that book. So I don't even have to guess at that angle. It's just going to hit it. I can see the evidence right there. I can see this negative shape right here. Pay attention to negative shapes, folks, okay? And I can simply copy that negative shape in my own drawing. And knowing that I've got that distance now, I've got the book. So there is one half of the book, the other half, the spine. Look at this angle, it's not parallel to this. I take, it, I take note of that, right? And I draw accordingly. Make sure that that's accurate. See this? This It all starts to get easier and easier as you go from big to small because you can really start to notice where things line up with each other, where the landmarks are, how to get things the right height, how to get things the right width, etc., etc. And the great thing about this is everybody can learn this. This is not something that is reserved for some quote-unquote uber-talented genius artists out there who draw everything perfectly. No. This is a system that everybody can learn. And the good news is, the more you apply this system, the more it gets baked in and becomes something that, as I mentioned earlier, you're just doing in the background. It's happening all the time. You'll start to see the world differently. I really mean this. You'll start to look at things and say, hey, look, I noticed how that part of that object aligns with that part of that object. I noticed how that section of that object is half the length of the total length of that object. You will start to subdivide and notice angles everywhere, and especially as somebody who draws a lot, you're really going to be internalizing this and starting to apply it, and it's going to make a huge difference in how you draw, I promise. Don't expect for it to just overnight be a thing that you're doing really well. It does require practice like anything else. 
but you really can train yourself to do this more quickly than you think. And best of all, and this is really important folks, what this does is it gives you a method for critiquing your own work that only uses practical and useful vocabulary for when you need to fix things. Here's an example. Kyle, I drew this face and the nose is all messed up. When you say that to me, you're using negative terminology, you're putting yourself down, you're saying the drawing stinks, messed up, the nose is messed up. But here's a question, is saying the nose is messed up descriptive in any way, shape or form in a way that I can actually use that information to make a change? No, it's not. The difference would be this. Kyle, I know that the nose I drew is wrong. And then I say to you, how so? And then you say, well, as I compare it to the distance between the inside corner of one eye, travel across the face of the inside corner of the other eye, I notice that I moved the nose too far to the left and I made it too tall or too wide. You see what I'm saying? Oh, and the angle from the ball of the nose uh, down to uh, where it meets the, the mouth, okay, the septum there, I notice that that angle is incorrect. It needs to be more obtuse or more acute, etc. And then I need to move this nostril to the right because I see that it aligns with the inside corner of that eye. So when you start to use this kind of vocabulary all across your drawing, then you give yourself a way to fix the drawing with no judgment. You're not beating your right. You're simply able to practically and objectively observe what needs to be fixed and then fix it. You have the power to fix your drawing and make it accurate by using this kind of a system. And there's no more of that nonsense where you tell yourself, I stink, I can't draw eyes. I stink, I can't draw mouths. I can't draw X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. It's not true. You just have to look at the shapes, draw big to medium to small, compare the distances, compare the angles, use these tricks with aligning things vertically, horizontally, or even across angles. Use implied lines that travel across the drawing or travel across a negative space. When you start to use all these tricks, everything starts to make sense, okay? You're just translating what's out there in the 3D world to a 2D space, all right? Draw more with straight lines in the beginning. Try and simplify. Look for the simplest statement possible and use straight lines to communicate that. And later, you can come in and do all those fancy bits, okay? And when I'm talking about fancy bits, I'm talking about this kind of stuff, right? We're looking at these contours of the face, right? Look at this shape right here. A lot of subtlety going on there, all right? Now that shape... right here look along this that requires a lot of measuring and a lot of a lot of measurement and a lot of careful drawing now what makes it easier is if i've already gone to the trouble of establishing this angle okay step one and this distance from a to b if i've already done that work this becomes a lot easier to manage okay this is what I'm talking about, all right? And that's where you get to later on down the road. All right, so who wants to help me with this book right here? Let's check it out. What's the angle there? What's the distance? We go up from the bottom of the skirt right here. We travel out a little distance. How far over? Well, here I can see where this landmark is. If I drop straight down, I see I come over to the left, right? How far? Well, almost halfway the distance between that point and where the shirt is, okay? And since I've got my shirt right here, okay, and I can travel up this way, and I can travel uh, over to um, this landmark here, I can come halfway between one and two, and then I can hit that book right there and say, there's that spine, okay, right about there. And then I can just do this, connect that, okay, Get that a little lower. I can just, I can observe and I can make corrections. This is the great thing too. And you do this faster and faster as you get along with this process and it's so helpful. 
right? And now this is almost a perfect horizontal, travels up slightly, a bit like that, right? But almost a perfect horizontal. It comes inside of the boundaries, right? And I know that this shape, this negative shape we drew out here is already gonna give me information about completing that cover. So there we've got that book, all right? And why don't we just do this? Here, check this out. You know, you can't do this with paper, but it's just fun if you're drawing digitally to just do stuff like this. Come over here and see how well you did, right? So look, I'm off a little bit on this angle right here. And you could do this with your eyes too. You can simply look at this space and you could say, well, that's a little bit too, you know, this angle's a little different. And then just fix it just like that. Okay, now what did I not say to myself? Oh man, you messed up on that book, right? Saying something like that, is that helpful? No. So you get the book better. There you go. Bingo. Right? Simple as that. Such a such a practical and useful uh, way to draw here, folks. All right. Now, um, we could carry on and we could keep doing this. And I do want to do more of this. I have another uh, subject to look at for you, all right, which I thought you might like. Um, but before we do, let's just quickly do a couple more things here. I just want to show you if I were moving into the nitty gritty. Uh, because we've already established this angle here, right? And I have the line from forehead to chin there. I can replicate that very nicely like this. And I see that chin is basically connecting with that shoulder right there. See how that just goes bum right there. All right. The other thing I can do now is from the hairline right here, about here, I can simply indicate things like this, like how far down to where that eye is, how far down to where that mouth is, how about the bottom of that nose. These little distances here you can start to play with in your own drawing, right? So I come down here and I say that's about where the eye is. I'm just looking like this, just kind of like travel out from there, right? And I can drop down a little further and say, okay, nose is about there. Drop down a little further, say the... Uh, mouth is about there and I can just draw those out like this right and I still haven't gotten to any of the contours in the face yet not this section because I don't want to yet not yet because now what I want to do is measure things that travel across the center line of the face right if you have anything that has a nice center line where you have symmetry involved this is a good thing to do I could say, all right, so I know that I've got a corner of the mouth here and I start to notice, oh, hey, this head is tilted. So all I do is just draw lines across from this point, okay? Just knowing that that's gonna be the angle I have to deal with later, okay? By doing that, I can easily come back to it and I can get things lined up nicely. That's gonna, that's gonna really matter, okay? So there's an eye there. And there's an eye there. And I want to make sure those eyes are in line with one another correctly, right? What about here? The bridge of the nose is a perfect vertical. How convenient. Drop that down. I say, good, I've got that. Corner of the mouth, where does that line up? Right underneath the inside of that nostril. Ta-da, there it is, bam. Right, I've already got this line here. Where's the corner of this mouth line up? Look at that, outside of that eye, kablamo. There it is, mouth, nose, eyes, okay? Still haven't dealt with all this complexity. Don't need to, not important yet. Still just messing with getting all this stuff to be the right size, etc., etc. Right, you're just mapping it all in, right? Traveling across this way, what do I do? I hit the middle of that ear. That helps me get that ear more accurately placed. All right, so I can erase away that right there and I can say, boom. Pop that in right there, right? Place that, kablam, and up we go. And that helps me to get that in the right spot. Now, ah, okay. See how we're doing that? All right. So I hope you're getting the picture. I hope you're excited about this process. Um, And yeah, it's just, it's really, it's really great. 
once once when you discover stuff like this, it makes you're just gonna be so happy. You're gonna find yourself immediately seeing things differently, you know, and that's just that's just a huge part of the deal to getting to where things are accurate is just seeing them in this way, right? So ba bum ba bum, there's a shoe right there. Right? A shoe right here. You can compare those angles. Just drop that down here. And up we go. Right? So let's compare the two there. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Um, here, I'll do this. I'll get rid of all these lines on top of the figure. And we'll we'll go ahead and we'll knock back the opacity on our figure just a little bit here. 40%. And then we'll take our uh, line art and we'll change the color to it like a bright red. And I'll just slide it over. And you can then see how you're doing with everything, right? That is pretty close. Now, look at the, here are some areas I can see where um, I need to work it out. Look, down here, right? I need to remember that that foot lines up with the, uh, the skirt. See that? That's easy to observe. And I could have observed that and not just guessed, but I guessed. And you see what happens, right? You can't do the guessing right because that's what's going to happen is you think something is in one place but you always have that ability and this is the best part you can always check just by looking right so if i had this photo in front of me or this model in front of me and i saw oh look there's a vertical line dropping uh from the sorry from the skirt like this and i've got my skirt here on my paper i just go oh well that's where it is right so i need to know that and i need to Respect that and get that correct, okay? And that's how you do it. All right, so quickly, let's take a look at something else. Here we have a tiger. What do you do, folks? Give yourself a bounding box, right? Is it taller or wider? Let's see. It is wider then it is tall, right? But not by much. So I, I know I can see that as I'm drawing. So that's really kind of the shape I'm dealing with right there. Um, and how would you subdivide this? Well, one of the things you can do is you can look at areas that give you nice straight lines. Look at this area right here, okay? This area here. Now, where does that fall along the way? So I can look at the total distance here and I can say, all right, so I'm basically dividing this into kind of thirds, right? And along that first third is where I'm hitting the back of that arm right there. That feels pretty good. And then from this outermost point here, okay, this is the point right here where the head is, I can see that I can divide this space, right? Divide it in, in half and then in half again. And what's that giving me? That's giving me kind of Little head, little head measurement right there, okay? And from that corner of the head, right, coming from the inside, look at this nice angle I'm getting down to the foot right there. So I just say, yeah, that's gonna help me get the placement, whoops, of those feet right there. So I've got one, but one paw like here and another paw here. And that's gonna be how that works. Okay, and up we go from here. Bum, 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 bum. All right, I'm traveling up now. I'm just gonna speed this up so you can see how I'm doing this. See that angle there? Bam, I just hit that, like so. All right, I bring this in a little bit. Okay, I look at the head, and I notice that from the inside of this, I can travel up, and that's gonna cut off that head right there. Get that all in, in, in spot right there. Travel around here basically like a, a hexagon or octagon, I mean, right there, right? And I've got one ear here and one here. See how quickly we can go? What about this shoulder? That lines up with the eyes and I can see the eyes are about here. So I can pull that out for that shoulder, bam. Okay, now on down. What about this angle here, right? I just look at that and I say, how far along does that go? 
goes about this far, right? It's gonna connect basically with that eye right there. So I've got an eye about here. I can connect that and travel back this way. And then at about that last third, it levels out. So I hit that, level that out, okay? And then it dips down again. So we go out, over, down, across, right? And then there's that, there's that tail right there, okay? And then for this section here, well, I can travel up from the leg and right where this angle is here, I can cut all the way through, just come down. And I see that that changes before we get to this change here. So I account for that change right there. Okay, and then straight across this away. There's that tail. I estimate the, the, the width of that tail. Come on down this way and down this way for that leg and another leg right there, okay? I look at this negative space right here between the legs and I go ahead and I compare that shape I've got there. That looks pretty darn good. There you go, folks. That's how you do it. Try it, I hope you love it. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.